Toyota just unveiled the redesigned 2023 Prius and Prius Prime plug-in ahead of the Los Angeles Auto Show. Now, the new versions of this pioneering car promise greater efficiency, extra standard safety equipment, and more style than ever. And yes, I just used the word style to describe a Prius. We really must be living in the end times. Grabbing your attention, this 2023 Prius is cleaner and more elegant than ever before. And I've got to say, seeing this car in person, I'm blown away. It looks absolutely phenomenal. And for a modern Toyota, there is remarkable restraint to this car's design. Adding to the drama, this car's rear is about one inch wider than before, and the seating position has been moved about one inch closer to the pavement. Beyond that, the roof line has also been dropped by about two inches, plus prime plug-in models can optionally be fitted with a solar panel up top that will help charge the battery or run the HVAC system. The new Prius features a fifth generation hybrid powertrain that includes a larger two liter engine. Beyond that, there's a new lithium ion battery. It mounts underneath the rear seat, though it is smaller, lighter, and has 15% more output than its predecessor. Front drive models have 194 horsepower and can hit 60 miles per hour in just 7.2 seconds. That's 26% quicker than before. Now the all-wheel drive Prius has 196 ponies and it can hit mile a minute speeds in seven seconds flat. But what about efficiency? Well, Toyota estimates a front-wheel drive LE model will return 57 MPG combined, which is a whopper of a number. The plug-in Prius Prime's powertrain is basically the same as the standard models, though the battery is appreciably larger than before, meaning the car's electric-only range has increased by more than 50%, going from 25 miles to maybe 40 or more. You also get 220 horsepower, nearly 100 more ponies, and a 0-60 to 60 time of just 6.6 .6 seconds, which is legitimately quick. Matching the exterior, this car's cabin is far nicer than before, and the overall design is much more conventional than what we've seen in previous generation Prius cars. Just like in the Toyota BZ4X, we have a digital instrument cluster that's mounted nice and high on the dashboard so your eyes don't have to go too far from the road, though I will say when the steering wheel is kind of adjusted where I want it, it does block a good portion of that display. Dominating the dashboard, you can get a 12.3-inch touchscreen in this car, which looks great. And get this, the car comes with six, six USB Type-C ports. So if your phone ever runs out of juice, you've got no one to blame but yourself. The 2023 Prius and Prius Prime plug-in both come standard with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which is a suite of advanced driver assistance technologies. And this includes a whole bunch of goodies like automatic high beams, adaptive cruise control, lane centering, and road sign recognition, to name a few. I'm not going to tell you the rest because I don't remember them all. But trust me, they're good. You're going to want them. There's good stuff. The 2023 Toyota Prius is one of the prettiest cars Toyota has ever produced. It has a sharply rigged windshield flowing into a traditional hatchback design. Gone is the split rear hatch that was hard to see out of, and it's replaced with a small window that's also surprisingly difficult to see out of. The car has curves and angles and looks way more elegant than spaceshipy. It won't blend in on the highway because it looks weird, but rather it'll draw attention from folks wondering, is that really a Toyota? The Prius comes in two flavors, traditional hybrid and plug-in prime, and three different trim levels. The standard Prius comes in either front-wheel drive or electronic all-wheel drive. The EPA estimated fuel economy for the front drive model is 56 mpg, while the all-wheel drive comes in at 54 mpg. The front drive model makes 194 horsepower, while the all-wheel drive makes 196. Nearly 200 horsepower from a Prius is a bit crazy. The three trim levels are LE, XLE, and Limited. All-wheel drive is available on all versions. Toyota Safety Sense 3 comes standard, and there's tons of new tech in the Prius. Let's get behind the wheel and see what it's like to live with. We are in currently a Limited version, which is the fully loaded, fully specced version of the car. Um, we've been in a couple throughout the day, all-wheel drive, stuff like that. Uh, they all drive very similar. Uh, the all-wheel drive is a little bit quicker to 60, according to Toyota. Um, 
I can't tell a huge difference, to be completely honest. Um, but all-wheel drive for the new version actually works at all speeds. So the previous version of the, of the Prius and all-wheel drive, once you were past 25 miles an hour, the rear axle would just never engage. So um, it now works at all speeds, which is nice. Um, let's, I mean, let's start with the interior. Uh, up front, it has the steering wheel from the BZ4X, as well as the instrument cluster. Uh, for me, I'm able to get the steering wheel kind of low enough that I can see the instrument cluster okay with the speedometer and safety features and all of that. Um, my colleague Craig, if you watch his uh, BC4X video, he complains that he can't get the steering wheel at a right position to also be able to see the instrument cluster. So you're probably going to want to sit in one um, and see if you can get comfortable before you, you kind of settle on that. Um, otherwise, it's standard Toyota Fair, which is its new... The, this one has the available 12 point something inch um, infotainment screen, which has wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. It's based on Android Automotive. Toyota won't necessarily publicly admit that because they designed it in down in Plano. But um, it keeps getting better in each modern Toyota that I drive. Um, if you've driven it in like Tundra or in um, Sequoia, it feels kind of feels kind of dated. The RX felt a little bit better. Um, it's actually pretty snappy here, uh, which. I definitely appreciate. I mean, we haven't had any issues uh, using it. You can ask, and because it's Google based, you can ask it both appropriate and inappropriate things, and it'll answer, uh, which we tested earlier, but we won't do now. Um, because the car is, I think, an inch wider, it's like two inches longer, um, and it's lower, but they also dramatically increase the rake of the front of the front windshield um, which actually limits a little bit of your headroom especially getting in and out uh, I have enough headroom as I sit here dr driving in the same in the passenger seat but I've hit my head a few times on this climbing in and out um, you feel a little bit more claustrophobic than you did in the previous Prius where you notice the real lack of headroom though is in the rear seats uh, you lose several inches of headroom over the previous model and Maybe that's not a big deal to you, um, but if you're somebody that owns a Prius because, oh, I Uber or I Lyft with it, or it's a taxi or something like that, your passengers are gonna definitely not appreciate the reduced headroom. Uh, if it's just little kids and stuff that you put back there, you probably won't notice that are fine. Or if you never really use the back seat, then, then, you know, it's no big deal. But that's kind of the real big takeaway inside. Uh, the storage, the rear cargo capacity is also down from the previous version. This really, I think, creates an opportunity if you're somebody that wants a bit smaller of a Toyota hybrid and wants sort of the space and stuff, the Corolla Cross hybrid will be probably be what you want. Uh, and if you don't need sort of that crossoveriness, uh, Corolla hybrid and the control, which now also comes in all-wheel drive, might be something you want to look at too. But where the Prius, I think, really excels in um, is performance. It has almost 200 horsepower on tap. Uh, the Prime version that we'll drive, I think, in March will have even more. Uh, the CVT drone's a little bit loud. Uh, at highway speeds, the car's a little bit loud. I wish it was a little bit quieter. Lots of tire noise, not really a lot of wind noise. Um, but a CVTs are, they're fine, they're efficient, but they're not the most pleasant sounding things in the world. Uh, some other things on the limited model, you get heated and ventilated seats. Um, you can get a digital rear view mirror. You can get heated rear seats. Uh, there's, I mean, you can get a lot of real luxury kind of features in the car. And all trims come with Toyota Safety Sense, which is their automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, uh, lane centering, traffic sign assist, all of the, everything that you would kind of expect from a modern, you know, modern technologically focused car is here and it's standard, which almost, and it's almost all here and it's, it's, I don't want to say it's free, but they don't charge you for it. Whereas some other automakers, especially some premium automakers are like, oh, well, you want adaptive cruise? Well, you're going to have to pay more. Toyota just gets it to you. Some of the misses in the interior, uh, especially on the more expensive models, like the one that we're in. There is only single zone climate control, which seems a little odd, especially because I can get dual heated and ventilated front seats. Uh, why can't I get two zones of climate? That seems like a little bit of a miss. Um, also, there is the, the front passenger seat is not powered on any trim. 
Now I could see on the base model not offering it, but not having it on any trim is a little, a little sus. Uh, guess it depends on how many, how often different people are in and out of those seats. Um, they are more comfortable than they've ever been. Toyota's made an effort to, in some ways, widen the seat, reduce the stress on certain, um, uh, basically joint points in your body, it's, so you can drive the car longer without as much fatigue. Um, not quite a zero gravity seat from Nissan, but they do feel nicer than they did in the previous car. Uh, the interior though itself is a little bit of a mixed bag. None of it is bad. Nothing, nothing in here is, is trash or um, just terrible, but it doesn't necessarily feel premium. Now, I'll get the pricing here in a second, and, you know, you'll be like, oh, hey, whatever, it doesn't matter. But um, a lot of it, the, there's, there's some hard-touch materials where I don't necessarily like hard-touch materials, so such as along here where you'd rush on, on the windowsill. Um, it's soft, but it's not super soft. Uh, my knee hits down here on some pretty hard plastic. Uh, it's, it's not bad, but it's not premium. And maybe that's how they were able to get to a $27,000 starting price, which is what Prius starts at. With delivery and stuff, you're looking at 28, 28 and a half. And you get, for that 28 and a half, you get a lot of those options that I've already talked to you about. Um, yes, yeah, a little bit smaller of an infotainment screen, but you still get all the safety features. You get the fuel economy, you get all the horsepower. Uh, going up in trim levels gets you things like um, a digital key, so you can use your, your phone as a key as well as, as the key that comes with the car. Um, you get power lift gates, uh, you have a panoramic, a panoramic roof, like the, the, but the basis, of everything that makes, I think, the, the Prius a good car is there at that $28,000 price point. And I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, the car that we're in right now w without all wheel drive is roughly 38-ish. Um, which actually still feels like a reasonably good deal, but it doesn't feel as stellar of a deal. I think some of the, I think you start to notice some of the plastics maybe a little bit more in here. Um, but the outside is fantastic. Like it is a good looking car. People like look at you and that's never happened when I've driven a Prius. And it, it, it looks futuristic without being like a spaceship and I don't know. I think it's. I think it's handsome. I think it's attractive. And you know, based on the feedback we received from viewers like you, it's you're excited about it. Um, ultimately, the driving impressions I think are good. If you're in any modern Toyota, I think they all drive reasonably well. This is the best driving Prius I've been in by far. Uh, there's. I don't want to say there's steering feel, but there's definitely more of an effort to kind of make you better connected with what's underneath the car. Um, it's all power assist steering, you know, uh, electric power assist. So you, you lose a lot of that, but you know, it's, it's good over bumps. The, the platform feels very solid. Uh, it, it take, it absorbs at least these California bumps really well. Um, maybe not Michigan potholes, but you know, I bet it still will do pretty decent there. And you're getting like 57 miles to the gallon. So it's a very attractive car. I think that they're looking for a buyer who's looking for more style in in their efficient vehicle. Now that Toyota has a showroom full of, of hybrids, uh, Kia Nero is probably the the closest competitor. Um, their base car doesn't feel as tech focused as as techy as what this does in the base car. Um, however, I also think some of the materials are a little bit nicer than Nero. So um, if you are looking to cross shop, maybe, you know, maybe check that out. Uh, you'll definitely have some more rear storage space in the cargo area, because again, you lose a decent amount here. But uh, the pricing's within $300. So, you know, maybe give that a look. But like, if you if you looked at the Prius and you're like, hmm, maybe this is for me. I mean, 56 miles to the gallon on the, on the front wheel drive, 54 on the all wheel drive. The pricing's to go all-wheel drives only like a thousand dollars more fifteen hundred dollars more so they're not ripping you off to do that that jump um you don't need to use premium field they recommend it but they say you don't need it and it looks really good so but overall i think it's a real solid a real solid offering for a pretty decent price um and i even joked that like the perfect sort of two-car garage for 
55 grand would be this, you know, a base model Prius and a Maverick, a Maverick hybrid. Like that kind of suits everything you'd ever need if you have the space for them. Let's take a more in-depth look at how the 2023 Toyota Prius will set you back if you want to have this attractive hunk of metal in your garage. The LE model starts at $28,545. To add all-wheel drive, add $1,100 to the cost. There are no additional options except for premium paints, windshield pearl, and supersonic red at $495. The XLE starts at $31,990, and the jump to all-wheel drive adds $1,400. Some big changes here include heated front seats and a power driver's seat, rain sensing wipers, and even a wireless phone charger. Options include the before mentioned premium paint, digital key support for $275, an upgraded 12.3 inch infotainment system for $735, and a fixed glass roof for $1,000. If you want all the goodies, you're going to want the limited trim. It starts at $35,560, plus $1,400 if you want all-wheel drive, and includes niceties like ventilated front seats, a power lift gate, all the optional features from XLE, and JBL Premium Audio. Options here include a digital rear view mirror for $200, which you're probably gonna want considering rearward visibility, heated rear seats at $350, and the limited premium package at $1,085 that includes advanced park, automatic parking, and a panoramic view monitor. Again, Premium paint is $495. All pricing includes the $1,095 destination charge. This is the best looking Prius I've ever driven, and it's the best driving Prius I've ever driven. I don't like hitting my head getting in and out of the car, and I don't like the reduced headroom in the rear and reduced cargo capacity, but the car looks fantastic, gets great fuel economy, and provides a unique offering in the Toyota showroom. Next to me is the quickest, most powerful, most technologically advanced, and prettiest Toyota Prius that has ever existed. Like the previous generation Prius, this new Prius is available in two different versions. The hybrid version that we drove last fall, and this, the all new Prime plug-in hybrid. With over 40 miles of all electric range and well over 200 horsepower, is this the most fun Prius you can buy? Let's find out. All right, so behind the wheel of the Prius Prime, uh, some of the things that I like, obviously the exterior design I think is gorgeous. Uh, the interior design itself looks very good. It looks futuristic. It looks modern. Not entirely sold on the steering wheel sitting so low with the cluster sort of up here. Um, but some of the interior plastics, I think, especially here on the door or sort of down here where my knee hits, could be a little bit softer. Ultimately, this starts at, you know, right around $30,000, so it's not a bad, it, it's not really a bad place to be for that. Heated, ventilated seats and all that stuff. Um, but some of the drawbacks, like I said, some of the plastics, rear seat headroom isn't quite as nice as it was on the previous car. The, the sort of drone of the CVT, which you're not really going to be able to hear right now, but when you're driving in hybrid mode, you know, you give it a little bit of throttle, it'll be like, the, the Korean automakers put a traditional six-speed or eight-speed automatic in a car in their hybrids. It doesn't get as good a fuel economy, but it just feels like a better sort of overall experience. Um, I'm on the highway. I'm on the highway right now. I'm on the five. Um, it's quiet enough. I've been in some EVs that are definitely a little more quiet. Uh, there is some road noise, especially sort of coming from the rear of the vehicle, sort of down towards where the tires would be. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's anything offensive by any stretch, uh, but it's a little bit louder than maybe some of the other cars that I've been in recently. But this also does have a gasoline powered motor. Now what this car has over the standard Prius is way more power. Both the all wheel drive and the standard front wheel drive Prius both fall a little bit under the 200 horsepower range. This one's well into the 200s. And when you put your foot down, like, I mean, this car will scoot. Toyota claims a zero to 60 time of 6.6 .6 seconds, and I do believe it. Uh, I don't necessarily so like the, the drone of the CVT as you get there, but you know, it, it's, it's a very quick car for, for highway driving, for doing long miles, for getting up to speed, even on these notoriously short 
shortened uh, on-ramps here in California. Plenty of power, plenty of performance. And uh, the advantage of the plug-in hybrid, other than more power, is you get roughly 40 miles of all-electric range. Uh, plug it in, it takes, I think, somewhere around... A, they, they were claiming a 24-amp 240, so that should be around 3 kilowatts or so. So overnight, you'll be able to get your full charge range, for sure. Um, and as long as you're driving 40 miles or less every day, you may never use the gas motor. But you'll have always have that sort of backup option to, hey, if I want to do a longer road trip or whatever. Um, you know, and I, I I like this car. I genuinely, genuinely I do. Um, I like sort of the way the infotainment's laid out. Every newer version of this Toyota's, of this new Toyota connected system works better than the previous version. Um, I like how they implement the wireless charging pad, which kind of slots your phone in kind of like a Nintendo cartridge, uh, which is a great way to prevent you from staring at it, but also kind of secure it in case so it doesn't go flopping around. Uh, this particular color, uh, the, the dark gray that I have, has a reddish interior. The red trim pieces are nice. Um, in the Prime, there's a little bit of a red accent lighting that goes underneath the infotainment system. In the standard Prius, it's blue. But in both cars, what's cool is, is if you're sitting in a traffic light and the car in front of you starts to pull away, the light will start pulsating to kind of give you a little bit of a nudge, like, hey, pay attention, traffic's moving, uh, which, is, which is pretty cool. Um, otherwise, gosh, this is a pretty car. And it just, it, it really doesn't look like a lot of what else is on the road. And Toyota's going through this phase right now, especially um, when you guys eventually see the marketing for this, where they'll be like, oh, Prius is pretty now. Oh, Prius is cool. Oh, you know, kind of trying to shake off that, that old image. Now, it's like, well, are they trying to say that it, it's kind of like a double a double-edged sword, right? Because this new car is prettier. It's far prettier than the old car. But then it's like, well, if they could have always built a pretty car, why didn't they? And if the people that bought the previous Prius didn't, um, you know, upgrade to this one, did they make a bad choice by buying a previously ugly Prius? You know, so it, it's it's a weird way to attack the marketing. What I will say, though, is if you're coming from any Prius prior to this one, whether it's the Prime or the regular traditional hybrid, you're going to be blown away by the new Prius. Drives better, rides better, it's quieter, the CVT is actually quieter in these new cars. Better range on the plug-in hybrid, the availability sort of for all-wheel drive on the, uh, the standard car, which now carries over, you know, which carries, which is, it's, it's more powerful than it was before. Um, the infotainment is new. It has wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Like, it, this feels like a technologically modern car. My biggest complaints, biggest criticisms, other than I kind of wish some of these plastics were a little nicer, is honestly, it's sort of like, how does Prius and Prius Prime fit in 2023? So if you walk into a showroom, the entire showroom is full of hybrids, all the way from the Corolla Cross hybrid that I'm also driving today, all the way up through Tundra as a hybrid. So Prius is no longer synonymous with hybrid. And I don't know from a marketing standpoint where Prius kind of fits. Now, they're gonna tell you, oh, well, this is for the, the driver that wants to drive a more attractive looking car. And I do think it's more attractive. Um, I'm considering replacing the kind of beater car that I have now that I drive back and forth to the airport with when I don't have a press car. Like, I could see a Prius being, I could see this Prius being that car. Um, but, you know, the Corolla Cross has a little bit more space. The RAV, if, if the Corolla Cross doesn't have enough space, the RAV has, definitely has some more space. The RAV Prime is an excellent plug-in hybrid, if you can find one. Um, and, you know, the Prius is just, it, it's no longer an innovator. Now, there's some cool stuff on here that other car makers aren't doing or offering, such as this particular spec that I am in has a solar roof. So I think it's a 150 watt solar roof that when the car is parked, it charges, it'll send power to the onboard, the lithium ion battery. And then while you're driving, it helps support the 12 volt system. So it'll help support the climate control, radio functions like that. So like that's sort of innovative in that, it's not innovative because Prius has had it before, but it's, it's a thought process. It's, it's thinking, well, how can we help improve the efficiency? The roof's already here. We already know that there's something that needs to go there. So why not offer a, a solar powered roof, you know, a solar roof for it? 
yeah, it's not making a lot of electricity, electricity, but it's some. Um, but gosh darn it, you know, Toyota even has an EV right now, a BZ4X, and while it's not our favorite EV by any stretch, you know, there's going to be more coming, and the competition now isn't strictly hybrids, it is EVs. You could go buy a Bolt EUV or a Bolt EV and save five, six, seven grand over a Prius, a comparably equipped Prius, you can get Super Cruise and the Bolt EUV. Uh, that of, that The Bolt, of course, is hindered by its DC fast charge rate, uh, which is slow, but you know, if you know you're going to stay under those 200, 220 miles of range that that car has, gosh, that's, a, that's not a bad thing. Especially if you're looking at like a Prius as a commuter, like your, your second car, then it's almost like, well, should you buy, you know, should you buy the, the Prius or should you go for an EV, like an inexpensive EV, like the Bolt or Leaf? Ultimately, bottom line, I'll sum it up for you here. If you can live with an EV and you don't want to spend a ton of money, you know, I think the Bolt is actually a pretty good way to go. I personally couldn't live with a Bolt every day. Not because it's a terrible car or anything like that, but simply put, I drive too many miles on days that I have to go back and forth to the airport, and I don't want to have to sit at a DC fast charger at 55 kilowatts. I don't want to do it. So, now, uh, a, a very efficient hybrid then kind of comes into play. If you're doing a lot of miles for whether it's work or personal or whatever, then it's like, okay, well, do I go with Prius Prime or do I go with Prius? If most of your driving is 40 miles or less during any, any one particular day, then the occasional longer route, then get the Prius Prime, especially because you should be able to get hopefully a lease deal with the $7,500 incentive, but that keeps changing all the time. Under 40 miles most of the time, but want the security of a gas engine, Prius Prime is the way to go. If you want all-wheel drive or you drive more than 40 miles at a time, then the traditional Prius, the new traditional Prius, makes a lot of sense. Because at 54 to 56 MPG, compared to the 52 of this, the car is lighter, the all-wheel drive gives you a little bit more all-weather durability, and it's going to be a little bit more efficient for a little bit less money. So that's sort of the thing. Drive a lot of miles, get the Prius. Drive Sometimes drive a lot of miles, but mostly 40 or less, get the Prius Prime. If you are looking at a second car that you only need to drive back and forth to work, things like that, maybe look at a cheap EV, an inexpensive EV. It's, it's you know, you have the ability. I think you can save some money there. Live in an apartment, don't have access to that, don't want to fuss with that. The, the Prius, I still think, is a very good car. But when you walk into that showroom, it's not going to be a cut and drive thing. You may walk in and say, I'm here for a Prius, and it's a beautiful car, and you're like, yes, that's what I want. But then maybe you drive the Corolla Cross and you're like, well, huh, huh. And you end up with walking out with a Corolla Cross or a RAV4 or, you know, maybe even a standard Corolla. So the, the message is the Prius may be right for you, but it also may not be. But that's OK, because in that Toyota showroom will be something that you want. Remember that old TV commercial? Take a fresh look at Prius. It just might surprise you. Well, that's not a Prius. That's what I told him. Where are my pills? Except this wasn't for a Prius and it didn't use paper cutouts, but that's all we could afford. The ad was actually for Buick and everyone in it was just incredulous that the brand could build cars that didn't smell like a nursing home. Well, this commercial is all I could think about this week while testing the new 2023 Toyota Prius Prime. I kept saying to myself, that's not a Prius because it doesn't look like an alien mothership and drive like a dishwasher. Come on, Grandma, we gotta get you to bed. It's, we're past due for your sits bath. Come on, it's been a long day, I know, I know. Podiatrist is coming, Dr. Schachter. Indeed, this new model is, frankly, astonishing. The new Prius Prime delivers everything you loved about the previous model. Stellar efficiency, excellent electric range, and likely biblical longevity, while adding new features, vastly improving the performance, and putting it all in a package that looks, well, stunning. Based on the styling, it's hard to believe this is a Prius, or even a Toyota for that matter. 
Just drink it in, folks. This car's styling is so sleek and clean. I mean, you could put an Audi or Volvo badge on the front and nobody would bat an eye, which is so, it's so un-Toyota because this automaker's styling is typically just a carnival of lines and creases with weird shapes here and tacked on trim over there. But that is absolutely not the case with this new Prius, which I happen to think looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, the front of this vehicle is very sleek and clean, aside perhaps from this little protuberance where the front mounted license plate would go. We have a small grille here that flows nicely into these LED headlamps that are sort of a, a C shape and they do fit the overall look of the front end quite well. Down below it's very hard to see but there are some active grille shutters in here so those will close off to improve aerodynamics and then of course they will open again when additional cooling is required. One other thing of note up front, the hood is rather small, as you can see. It's actually smaller than the windshield, which is kind of an unusual design element, although it's not something you really notice in person. So the Prius Prime is available in three different trim levels. There's the base SE, the mid-range XSE, which is what we have here, and then of course there's the top line XSE premium. Now our car here does come standard with these beautiful 19 inch wheels. I very much like the silver and black motif and these rims fill out the wheel wells quite nicely. They fit the overall look of the car beautifully. Moving along the side of this new Prius you will notice that there is no tacked on trim and hardly any creases at all. The overall look is super clean aside perhaps from this little character line that sort of comes up from the sill and then fades away at the back door. That's about all you get on the side of the vehicle. Again super clean and there's something about the profile of the Prius here that kind of reminds me of the old Dodge Dart. But do I need to get my eyes checked? Am I crazy? Leave a comment down below. As for the door handles, you can see we have traditional pull style handles right up here on the front doors. No surprises there. But the back doors have these vertical slots where there's a small e-switch. So you pull that and that is what undoes the latch. And I'm not entirely certain why Toyota went with this design. I suspect it's because the door is a little bit too curvaceous here to fit a traditional handle. That would be my guess, but regardless, this design does work very well. And then of course we have the gas filler door on the driver's side rear fender. I can't open it because it's not unlatched, but you've probably seen a filler a neck before, so I don't really have to show you that. And this of course is mirrored by the charging port, which is on the passenger side rear fender. And then, of course, at the back of the vehicle, you can see it is also very elegantly styled. We have Prius spelled out in blocky letters right across here. The trim level is up a little bit higher. And then Prime is down here in sort of an interesting cursive font. I, I don't hate it, but it does look a little bit out of place. Do you have a favorite automotive font? Times New Roman? Maybe Comic Sans? Let us know, of course, in the comments down below. So, again, very cleanly styled back end. We have some body-sized, body-width tail lights here and then of course this is a lift back design so sort of the hatch and the glass move as one and if I pop it you can see that lifts up nice and high just like that revealing a fairly generous cargo area this is about 20.3 cubic feet of room not too shabby there's a little bit of space underneath here but this is really where you store the charging cable for the most part now if you want some extra space you can fold, of course, those rear backrests down, which is a little bit awkward to do. There are no straps or levers back here, so it's quite a reach to get to the latches. So normally you're going to go from the side doors and do those, which is just a little bit awkward. Regardless, if you fold those down, that increases the cargo space to just shy of 27 cubic feet. Back up front, let's talk about the 2023 Prius Prime's powertrain, and that's a lot of peas. But Anyway, there are no big surprises under here, just a whole lot of substantive improvements. This drivetrain is built around a larger 2-liter Atkinson cycle four-cylinder engine that, of course, delivers 150 horsepower and 139 pound-feet of torque all on its own. And this engine is matched to a pair of motor generators. And working through a fancy planetary gear set, they basically function kind of like an electronically controlled, continuously variable transmission. Now, both motor generators can be used to recharge the Prius Prime's battery pack, but motor generator two can also be used to drive the vehicle in EV mode. That motor is a permanent magnet design and it delivers 161 horsepower on its own, which moves this vehicle perfectly well. No, it's not as quick as when the combustion engine is in play, but the performance is perfectly adequate. So, 
Overall, the Prime has 220 system horsepower, which is about 100 more than the outgoing model, and that's enough to get you from zero to 60 in a legitimately quick 6.6 seconds, which is a 35% improvement compared to the 2022 model, which needed 10.2 seconds to do the same thing. Now, the new Prime has a much larger 13.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack versus just 8.8. .8. Now, that can be recharged from a 120 volt household outlet in about 11 hours, but if you tap into a 240 volt power source, it'll do the same thing in just four hours. As for all electric range, the SE trim tops out at 44 miles, though the XSE and XSE premium grades aren't quite as generous. They'll do 39 miles on a charge, but either way, the 2023 Prius Prime far outranges the outgoing model, which topped out at just 25 miles. Now, there aren't too many plug-in hybrids out there, and most of them are, unfortunately, crossovers. Therefore, the Prius Prime doesn't have a lot of direct competitors, and about the only one I could think of is the Kia Niro PHEV. Now, it's a very respectable product and a great value. Watch my full review by clicking the on-screen link. But as you can see here, this Toyota has significant advantages. More power, longer range, and noticeably quicker acceleration. And I'll tell you, the new Prime is legitimately quick. You may not believe me, but this car absolutely scoots when you hit the accelerator pedal. And I mean, 220 horsepower is nothing to sneeze at, even in a vehicle that weighs around 3,500 pounds. Overall, this Toyota's powertrain is torquey. It's super efficient, and it's very smooth. And of course, the engine even emits a pretty nice snarl when you get on the accelerator. Naturally, there are several different powertrain modes to choose from. EV mode basically runs the vehicle on electricity only, and that works at speeds up to 84 miles per hour. The engine may kick on depending on a variety of different conditions, but it should, for the most part, run exclusively off the battery. And of course, it delivers decent performance because that second motor generator does deliver 161 horsepower. Now, there's also an auto EV slash hybrid mode that will run the car primarily on electricity, though it will also automatically engage the gasoline engine at times where it's most efficient. So you're climbing a steep hill, you're out on the interstate at high speeds, it makes more sense to run off the engine at those points than it is to drain the battery. So that's what that mode will do, engage the engine when it makes the most sense to deliver the best efficiency. There's also HV mode, which basically allows the powertrain to operate like a conventional hybrid drivetrain, so the gasoline engine and the electric motor work together. And finally, there's a charge mode, which allows you to use the engine to replenish the battery while you're driving. Makes a lot of sense. Now, to switch between all of these different powertrain modes, Toyota has a couple buttons down here on the center console, which is fine, it's easy enough to do, though I do find that the names of the different modes are a little bit confusing, and I think using a single dial or one button would make a bit more sense than having two separate buttons, but it, it does work fine. And of course, this vehicle has several different driving modes, which you cycle through using a little rocker here on the center console. There's Eco, Normal, Sport, and then of course, a custom setting that allows you to adjust several vehicle parameters, and they all basically work as intended. I don't see much of a difference, though, between any of those modes. Now, the Prius Prime's ride and handling are excellent as well. Despite those rather large 19-inch wheels, the ride is very well controlled, but never harsh. Also, you get very, very little grittiness that comes up from the pavement, which makes this car almost feel like a luxury vehicle. It's, it's that refined. This vehicle steering is light to the touch and quite quick, though it does wade up noticeably when you're going in corners. But overall, the Prius has a very agile feeling, which I don't think you could ever say about a Prius before. This car is actually kind of fun to drive with the strong performance and the quick steering. Now, the steering wheel itself also has a very small overall diameter, which of course helps accentuate that feeling of agility, though there is one issue and it's a major problem. It's the location of the instrument cluster. So rather than having a screen closer to the steering wheel itself and then say another head-up display farther along the dashboard, they've put one screen sort of midway between trying to do 
two functions, trying to kill two birds with one stone, and it's an absolutely terrible place to mount this screen because when the steering wheel is adjusted to the place where I want it, the rim literally blocks more than half of the display. I cannot see the bottom portion of this screen at all, which obviously is far from ideal when you're driving. So I don't know how it, nobody at Toyota noticed this problem because they did it on two different vehicles, the Prius as well as the BZ4X. It's not as bad in that SUV, but still the steering wheel rim will block the display. So I don't know how they missed this, but it's kind of a huge oversight. Fortunately, the regenerative braking in this vehicle is completely natural and super smooth. The transition from regenerative to friction braking is basically invisible. Wonderful tuning on the brake pedal here. And honestly, Nissan could learn a thing or two from what Toyota has done because the brake pedal feel in the Aria SUV is honestly terrible. Next up, let's talk efficiency. Really, the main reason, or arguably the only reason people have historically purchased a Prius. And true to form, this car is super economical. Now the base SE model is rated at 53 miles per gallon city, 51 highway, and 52 combined, with an MPGE rating when you're running only on electricity of 127. Super impressive figures. Now the XSE, which we have here, and the XSE premium trim are of course slightly less economical, but still damn efficient. You should expect 50 miles per gallon city, 47 highway, and 48 combined, with an MPGE score of 114. When it comes to driver aids, Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 is standard across the entire Prius Prime range. And this includes goodies like lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, road sign recognition, automatic high beams, and a lot more. Now, proactive driving assist, of course, is one of those more features. It uses the forward-facing camera and radar sensors to gently apply the brakes as you enter corners, and it also helps you steer and maintain a safe distance behind other vehicles. And it's kind of like adaptive cruise control that's working silently in the background. You enter a corner, the vehicle will slightly slow down on its own. You'll feel the wheel sort of turn into the corner as well. And honestly, it's pretty transparent and I actually really like it. I will say this, the Prius Prime's interior is very nice, if not quite amazing. The front seats are comfortable, the infotainment system is incredibly intuitive and surprisingly responsive, and of course there is minimal wind and tire noise even at highway speeds. A couple downsides of note, back seat headroom is a little bit on the tight side, so be aware of that, and those gigantic rear roof pillars do hinder rearward visibility. I am sitting in the lovely new 2023 Toyota Prius Prime, and in this video, we're going to check out the interior and see what kind of technology this plug-in hybrid offers. So buckle up. Let's go. It's impossible to ignore this car's beautiful styling. The new Prius looks so good. Seriously, it's just dripping with elegance, which is not something you could ever say about this nameplate before the 2023 redesign. And fortunately, much of that good taste spills over to the interior. Gone is that wonky dashboard that was weird for no good reason. And they even got rid of some of that white trim that you could get in this car that kind of resembled a toilet seat. Now, of course, this is a mass market mainstream vehicle, so nothing inside is opulent. And of course, I think a few things could be a little bit sturdier, but overall, this is still a very nice cabin. We have attractively grained hard plastics. There's soft stuff on the door uppers. The climate control system is dead easy to use, see, and reach. Of course, the air vents are well designed as well, so why would I be pointing out air vents? Well, go check out my BMW i7 interior and tech video, because. Not every automaker knows how to design air vents, apparently. And of course, we have some red trim on both the dashboard and the seats to kind of liven things up. And of course, it mirrors the exterior paint color on this car, which is an optional hue called Supersonic Red that goes for 425 bucks. Moving our attention downward, there's a lot to talk about with this center console. And right up front, you can see there's a decently sized storage tray, but there is more because this section actually lifts up and out, revealing yet more storage. And they've injection molded a 
a hashtag in there, so hashtag hidden compartment. You can tag that on Twitter or something, whatever the kids are doing these days, and boast about all the drugs you're smuggling in your Prius. Anyway, we have a pair of cup holders, of course, that are more than up to the challenge of holding large beverages just like that. That is not gonna go anywhere. Moving rearward, we have the shift lever that pops up from the console. Very easy to use, just like that, and of course, the park button is right behind the lever itself. Then here we have some other switches that are used for controlling the various drive modes. This rocker does that, so if you want to put it in sport mode, you just do that. Then we have two other switches here that control the powertrain mode, so I can put it in EV mode or hybrid or auto using these two buttons right here. Of course, we have a wireless charging slot, so your phone can stay fully juiced while you're driving. It slides in super easy, just like that. And then, of course, we do have additional storage underneath the center armrest, though it is rather small, though it'll still fit a wallet, charging cable, or the wrapper from breakfast. The cliff bar was pretty good. So, in addition to the wireless charger I just mentioned, this car also has six USB type C ports. Getting this thing out of the way. We've got two at the front of the center console, two under the armrest, and then of course two at the back servicing rear seat passengers. Now this Prius Prime happens to be a mid-range XSE model, which means it comes standard with Softex, which is Toyota's branding for an artificial leather product. It is not, unfortunately, a Texas-based chain of ice cream parlors specializing in serving soft serve frozen dairy products much to my chagrin because ice cream sounds fantastic right now, even if they did offer like a barbecued uh, short rib or something. That would be an interesting flavor. Anyway, Softex looks great in this car. It feels good too. And of course it is spiced up with some red accents like I mentioned a few moments ago. As for the front seats in this car, they are very comfortable and both of them of course are heated. I am sitting right now in an eight-way power adjustable chair. That includes lumbar, of course. Passengers, though, will have to make do with a six-way manual seat. Now, when you're out and about in the new Prius, I've got to warn you, the sight lines to the back are not great. Those C pillars for the roof are gigantic and they really restrict your outward visibility. At least, though, in the XSE Premium model, that's the top shelf trim, you can optionally get a digital rear view mirror, which should really expand your visibility to the rear of this car. However, other models, you gotta make do with a standard piece of glass, which should probably really be standard, the digital rear view mirror, as well as a much higher resolution backup camera, because if you throw this car in reverse, that's all you get. It's like a potato 20p resolution, something like that. And this is not competitive with a lot of other vehicles out there. Toyota should do a little better. Next up, displays. This car happens to have the optional $735 12.3-inch touchscreen that replaces the standard 8-inch panel. And I've got to say, this looks pretty fantastic. And the infotainment system that lives in here is extremely intuitive and responsive. The menu layout is simple, and of course, the performance is really very good. This is one of the snappier systems that I've experienced in cars today. Now, this also has Google points of interest, so you can find gas stations or restaurants, whatever stuff like that. Naturally, over-the-air software updates are supported. You can connect two different phones via Bluetooth to this system, which is always nice to have. There's a lot of good stuff to talk about here. A couple things, though, that I do want to point out. The volume knob is a bit of a reach over here on the passenger side of the dashboard. Of course, there is a toggle here on the steering wheel, but it's kind of an odd placement for that. Also, there is no physical tuning knob. So to handle any of those functions, you've got to dive into the infotainment system. And of course, this is also how you adjust various vehicle functions. You can see your trip information just like that. You can schedule your charging. Of course, that is not as important as with a pure electric vehicle, but it's still nice to have that option in a plug-in hybrid. And in typical Prius fashion, you can also see where the energy is flowing, where it's being generated, and how it's being used, which is always kind of cool to see. But of course, if you don't want to use Toyota's infotainment system, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are both standard in the Prius, and both of those smartphone mirroring systems will connect wirelessly. We also have a voice assistant that is both speedy and responsive. You can pull that up by hitting the search button here on the screen or the voice command button right on the steering wheel. Get me directions to Greasy Corner, Arkansas. I found Greasy Corner. Would you like to go now? Yes, please. Calculating route to Greasy Corner. It's a very hot tourist destination, I hear. Spring Breakers. Very Starting popular. Route guidance. Turn right at the end of the road onto 
Pavilion Drive. You get the idea. 11 hours, 38 minutes, 803 miles. You can pull up directions very easily. Or you can ask it stuff like, what's the weather in Munich, Bavaria this week? Give it a Here's couple the seconds. Here's forecast from Munich, Bavaria. You can see pretty nice, warm and sunny, except maybe Monday some thunderstorms could be blowing through. And then, of course, it'll also answer questions like, who was Kaiser Wilhelm II? And why was he named after dinner rolls? According to en.wikipedia.org, the second SS Kaiser Wilhelm II, named for the German emperor, was a 19,361 gross register ton passenger ship built by... <laughs> <laughs> I... All right, close enough. You get the idea. The, the voice system, the digital assistant can be useful, can also apparently be wrong sometimes, but you get the point. It's there and it works pretty well. Now, aside from this main 12.3 inch display, we also have a seven inch digital instrument cluster. And I have no problems with this panel itself, but the positioning that causes a lot of problems. So I think Toyota was trying to kill two birds with one stone here. So rather than having a separate digital instrument cluster mounted about here and then a head up display farther forward on the dashboard, they just put this one screen sort of in the middle, which is kind of a good idea, except in practice, it's pretty terrible because when I've got the steering column adjusted right where I want it, the rim of the wheel actually blocks most of that screen. I cannot see most of the display, which is not a good thing. I know it's not an issue for you right now. The camera is slightly off center, so you should be able to see all of that display. Of course, I can lower the steering wheel, the steering column all the way down to knee level and see all of the screen, but that's just not comfortable for long-term driving. And frankly, I'm kind of surprised nobody at Toyota saw this problem before the vehicle entered production because it's kind of a huge oversight. But anyway, I think it's time for an awkward jump cut. Whoa, what just happened? How did I get back here through the magic of editing? Wow. Anyway, back seat of the Toyota Prius. It is something of a mixed bag. You can see I've got plenty of leg room here, but if I sit up straight, my head does hit the ceiling. So six footers may not be the most comfortable in the back seat of the Prius Prime. The backrest is also quite vertical. So if you do want to sort of recline, you got to scoot your butt forward a little bit just like that. Of course, we do have a fold down armrest, which is great. And of course, we also have a 120 volt household outlet down here, which is great for charging your laptop, running an Osterizer blender, powering a drill motor. I don't know what you do in your car. It's none of my business. But anyway, that is a very quick look at the interior and technology of the 2023 Toyota Prius Prime. I think this car looks fantastic. The interior is very nice, and this vehicle does offer some very good technology as well. So overall, it is hands down the best Prius of all time, no questions asked. It's also a car that is highly desirable, and not just because it's super fuel efficient, but because it is a genuinely great vehicle. Let's recap the Prius Prime's strengths and weaknesses, and then finish this review. There's so much to love about Toyota's latest and greatest plug-in hybrid. The electric range is excellent. This vehicle practically has the refinement of a luxury car. The acceleration is impressively quick. The efficiency is top-notch too. And the new Prius is simply gorgeous. Really, I only have three complaints. One, rearward visibility is not great. Two, backseat headroom is tight for six-footers. And three, that instrument cluster is just awful. Pricing is another strength of the 2023 Prius Prime. This example checks out for an estimated $38,855, a totally reasonable sum for what is an excellent vehicle. And of course, that figure does include 1095 in destination fees. There's $1,000 extra for the optional glass roof. If you want the larger 12.3 inch infotainment screen, that's an additional $735. And then of course, this vehicle does wear a premium paint job. It's called Supersonic Red, and it goes for 400 and 25 bucks. Now, if you opt for a stripped down base SE version of the Prime, you're only gonna be spending around 33 grand, which is frankly a steal. Historically, the Toyota Prius has been the butt of countless jokes for its weak performance and dorky styling, but nobody's laughing now. This 2023 model is legitimately awesome. Take one for a spin and I think you'll be saying, that's not a Prius. Up next, watch my full review of the Lexus RZ450e by clicking right over here. You'll also learn why there are better all-electric luxury SUVs to choose from.
had to go to out of state college, be a field major, whatever. Should have been a pharmacist like your granddad. Now you come to grandma. I'm on a fixed income. I can't be doing that. I got other grandbabies too. Ah!